Hi, I'm Anna and welcome back to Books on the Go. I'm here with a book haul and it's a bit of a naughty one because I've been on a book buying ban. Um, I do this from time to time to try to read my TBR shelf and then bring it back to manageable size and it's failed again. Um, but there, it's always justified. So there are lots of good reasons for these uh, books. The first couple are writers who are coming to Adelaide Writers Week in, well, next week. It starts this time next Saturday. Um, and we're also going to read on the podcast. So I would have bought them anyway at the Writers Week book tent. So that's how I can justify this because I was going to buy them anyway, but because we're doing it for the podcast, I've really had to get a wriggle on and read them. So the first one is We That Are Young by Preti Taneja. And this one I have heard a bit of buzz about, but I we decided to do it for the podcast. Amanda, one of my co-hosts, loves um, fiction set in India, which this one is, and it's a, a retelling of King Lear, but set in modern day India. And I'm loving it so far. I've had to start, I actually, when I said, yes, let's do it for the podcast, I didn't realize how big it was. And I've had to really get my skates on, um, but really enjoying it so far. It's got a lovely tone. It feels like she's in complete command of the story. And there was a really good video on insert literary pun here where she talked about the books loving when you start reading a book and you can feel immediately that the author is in command of the story. And that I immediately had that sense with this one. Um, but it is 540 odd pages long. So I have I feel like I have to fly through it, which is, yeah might not be the best but it's also an easy read the style is easy to read which i'm enjoying so that's we that are young and another one that is in that category is the great believers by rebecca Mackay, which again i've heard a lot about and only the other day actually someone i spoke with uh, last night in san francisco said this was her very favorite book of recent times and I, uh, Rebecca Mackay is coming to Writers Week and we'll, we'll be doing this for the podcast and we're hoping to interview her as well. So, and I haven't started it yet. So I have a lot of intense reading to do in the next few days. Um, but this is set in Chicago and deals with the AIDS crisis in the 1980s and apparently is also, is very moving. So I'm looking forward to that because it's always interesting to read a book that you've that has been so hyped just to see how it stands up to that which I'm sure it will yeah so that's the great believers and next up is axiomatic by Maria Chimarkin now this is on the stellar prize long list which is a prize in Australia for the best women's writing and it's fiction or non-fiction this I think is non-fiction um, and it's a book of essays where she takes an axiom and then explores that in a in an essay and I don't know too much more it's had a very good blurb by Helen Garner who's a writer that I greatly admire stories are not enough History and psychology, not enough. Maybe this is how. It's interesting. So it sounds as if it's also quite meta in that she's trying to redefine or think about how we tell stories or how we explore ideas. So I'm really looking forward to that. The, the Stella Prize long list, I have not read any of the books. So I'm feeling like I've got a lot of catching up to do. But this one, um, Annie and I tipped, will at least be on the short list and Annie thinks it will win the Stella Prize. So that'll be interesting to see if she's right. Um, but it's certainly, I've also have heard a bit about it in the last few months. So it's been on my radar and that prompted me to go and buy it. So that's axiomatic. And then the next one is The Friend 
by Sigrid Nunez. I don't know if I've pronounced that correctly. This won the National Book Award and we did mention it on the podcast and I hadn't heard of it before then and thought about, you know, maybe we should read it and we never did. But when I was in Imprints, um, our local bookstore in the city in Adelaide, the, um, Jason said this was his favourite book that he'd read recently and he thinks it's wonderful and it's his book of the year so far, uh, which was such a big rap that I, I just had to get it. That's, <laughs> that's all I can say. Um, gorgeous cover and, uh, you know, it's not too daunting. It's quite short. So I don't know how where I'll fit that in, but um, I am intrigued. So I'll look forward to reading that. And it's about a woman who loses her lifelong friend to suicide but then um, is left with the dog that he has left behind. And of course the dog's pining for his owner and this woman doesn't necessarily want the dog, but they then are thrown together. So it's a meditation on friendship and loss and a celebration of the healing power of having dogs. So that could be really good. I like the premise of it, I think. Um, It sounds like a sort of a heartwarming book. Uh, So that's The Friend. And then one that, again, I was always going to buy this and it had been out of stock um, for a good reason, but I did finally get my hands on it. So that's No Friend But The Mountains by Beruz Buchani. So this recently won the Victorian Premier's Literary Award, which is one of the richest writing awards in Australia. And... It's quite startling because it's written by Beruz Buchani, who's a journalist, Kurdish journalist, and he is seeking asylum and is being held in Manus Island by, um, is being detained because the Australian government, um, when asylum seekers come by boat, will not process them on the mainland and um, hold them on Manus Island. And so he has been there since 2013. Um, He wrote this book via text message and it has then been translated. So he sent, I think, WhatsApp messages day by day and it has become this book, which is quite, it's a significant work and apparently really beautiful. I'm really looking forward to reading it. Um, It's very moving just to think that that's what he's been able to accomplish and what yeah what that means in terms of and it does make you think very seriously about our government's policy on asylum seekers so I think it's a, an important book and um, I will report back once I've read that and I should have mentioned it's translated by Omid Tofigian. I don't again I don't know about the pronunciation but that's no friend but the mountains and the last one is The Rosy Result by Graham Simpson, And this was a serendipitous purchase because, again, I would have bought it anyway because I've enjoyed the first two in the series. But I was in imprints and I ran into Graham Simpson. He came in to sign some books um, with no fanfare. It wasn't an event or anything like that, but he was there. And so I said well, now that I've seen you, I have to buy the book. Um, And he very kindly signed it for me. And um, he wrote Serendipity in Hindley Street, which was sweet. And so I'm very much looking forward to it. The premise of the, well, the, the Rosie series, I guess it is now, the Rosie project was about Don Tillman, who was looking for a life partner and he would spread, he had a sort of, brain that um, was incredibly ordered and he would spreadsheet everything and it was it had a comical side but it was very sweet as well and then he meets Rosie and then the Rosie that was the Rosie project and then the Rosie effect I think was they got together and then they had a baby Um, it's a while since I've read those two and this is the rosy result so now they are back in Australia they've been in New York and their son Hudson is struggling at school he's socially awkward and not fitting in and I think it's touching on um, autism I know that 
in the first two, Don does have, uh, you know, it's not um, explicit, but I think he's on the spectrum of autism or Asperger's. And that's what this is addressing as well with Hudson and how that plays out at school. And Graham was interesting saying how he actually wants the issue of autism front and centre a bit more, or at least mentioned in the blurb. And the UK publishers are saying um, they don't want it sort of spelt out, um, whereas he thinks it should be expressed more so that people really know that that's what it's about and can talk about it. And um, a friend of mine, I just posted something on Instagram about buying this one, and a friend of mine just said she's just finished it and absolutely loved it. And it was so true about um, dealing with uh, the autism spectrum disorder and how that goes for kids at school. And um, she was very moved by it. So I'm looking forward to this. And I love the way he writes because it's very easy to read. But again, that you can tell that there's a great intelligence there and he has a great sense of humour. So um, this should be a good one. And that is it for my naughty book haul. Let me know what you've been reading and or hauling recently and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.